Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Crusader Kings II, The Byzantine Empire. And I want to talk for a little bit before we get started again today, because one of the things I'd like to do in this LP is provide a bit more of a historical context. I want to feed your souls with entertainment, but also I want to feed your mind with knowledge. So let's talk a little bit about where the Byzantine Empire is at this point historically. Well, before we do that, let's look at, because I didn't show this last time, let's look at our house. This is House Aurelius, and these are our coat of arms. You can't see them very well, but it's a, a check pattern, which kind of symbolizes a cross. I didn't want to go full bore with the Greek cross, because that's also the Byzantine Empire logo, and it's also the logo of Thrace, which I am the Duke of, or the Do of, so I wanted mine to be slightly different. I also put green, because green is Marcus Aurelius' favorite color, and by that I mean me, not the real one whose favorite color I cannot discern. The little There's a little city here. You can barely see it, but there's a little city here, and that symbolizes Constantinople, the queen of cities. Because even if I were to lose my grip on the empire and someone else were to take over, the Aurelian dynasty and their leader will always be the duke, well, hopefully will always be the duke of Thrace and the count of Constantinople. So that's our city, and we're going to hold on to it, if nothing else. And then, of course, there's a little crown here, which symbolizes the fact that that we are rulers. We are, we are nobility, and it is our place in the world to rule. So that, currently, is our coat of arms. And, of course, the dynasty currently exists as Marcus II and Prince Unit 171. Now, I want to talk about our court. We have a bunch of randos in our court, and many of them I have no idea why they're even there. I looked a couple of them up. These two are actually, their dad is like Count or something, but his, his liege is the Khazar King. I don't know why they're in my court. I don't know why, they, why they're into me. I have no clue at all. But there's two people here that we really should pay attention to. That is Eudokia Inger and her husband, Basileos Macedon. Why are they important? Well, had Marcus Aurelius, Marcus II, not sprung out of the ether, and that's really what happened. If, you'll, if you look at Marcus more closely, you will find that he has no parents or grandparents or siblings. He's, he, he just appeared one day and took over the reins of the empire. But this fellow, Basileos Macedon, if you translate that to English, it's Basil the Macedonian. And he actually would be the person who would be the Byzantine emperor right now had we played this game historically and not created Marcus. Basil the Macedonian has a very interesting history and one I want to quickly go into. Now bear in mind, we're in November of 868. We've almost been playing this game for an entire year. Well, in 842, there was an emperor by the name of Theophilos, and he died. He died leaving his wife and his, at that point, two-year-old son. The wife's name was Theodora. The son's name was Michael III. Now, Theodora ruled the empire as regent for Michael III from 842 until 855 for 13 years. She was a fantastic ruler. She did something that is still celebrated in the Orthodox Church today. She restored the icons to Byzantium. Now, many of you know that earlier in Byzantine history, there was this huge religious controversy called iconoclasm, which basically means that there was a faction of the empire, including many emperors, who believed that to draw a picture or to have an image of the saints or of Christ was a, was heretical, was against the will of God. And so they went around trying to destroy all of these artworks, which they referred to as icons. And there was another group who said, hey, no, the icons are, are fantastic. We really like them. And, and so there was this huge controversy where one day you'd have an iconoclast patriarch and the next day you'd have an iconodual patriarch. It, it was just this big thing. And what Theodora did she finally called a council and just 
got rid of iconoclasm. She said, you know what? Icons are all right. And it stuck. You know, everybody agreed to it. And from that moment on, the iconoclast heresy, the controversy ended. And she was credited for this, and it's a great achievement. I mean, previous emperors were great military strategists and did many wonderful things, but were just dogged constantly by the religious debates of their time. And she was able to basically silence this debate and put it in the past of the empire. So for that, she should definitely be remembered and, and she is remembered they still have a day it's called the feast of the orthodoxy or the triumph of the orthodoxy and it's a holiday which is the first sunday of lent which is an eastern orthodox period that's roughly around march and april this this day is in march there's a catholic version just called lent i think the eastern version is called great lent but and they're similar but different so there you go so theodora did that and she also had a eunuch named Theokistos, who was her closest confidant, and he was actually a very able administrator as well, and a de decent general. He led campaigns on her behalf. However, Michael III obviously wanted to be emperor, and so when he was 15 years old, he finally usurped power from his mother, confined her to a monastery, and took over as the emperor of the Byzantine Empire. He was under the influence at first of his uncle Bardas, that would be Theodora's brother, and his other uncle Petronas. He is known to us today as Michael the Drunkard because he was not a very capable man. He, he, he basically was a partier. He liked women. He liked drinking. He was uh, just a friendly, affable guy, but not really an able administrator. And he allowed his cronies to kind of run the empire at this point, first starting with his uncles. However, there were some great achievements that took place during Michael's reign. He was able to Christianize Bulgaria, for example, which was a big deal. From then on out, Bulgaria would fall under the sway of the Orthodox Church. And he also fought against the Pope in Moravia, where he Christianized them as well, and they decided to follow the, the Eastern Orthodox religion rather than the Western Catholic religion. He was interesting, however, in that he did not care very much for his wife and didn't have any children with her. He had a mistress instead. This mistress's name was Eudokia Ingerina. And he'd realized, however, that there would be a scandal if it was found out that he had this mistress. And so what he did was he went to his favorite drinking buddy, uh, a lowborn peasant by the name of Basil the Macedonian. Basil. Basil. And he said... Hey, will you marry my mistress? And she, at this point, I think she either had this, her son already by Michael or she was in the process of that happening. And so what Michael did was he married his, his mistress to Basil, Basil, and as kind of payment to him, he made him co-emperor. And he did that for another reason, too, because that would mean that his son, Michael's bastard son, would leg be legitimate and would one day succeed to the throne of the Byzantine Empire. And to kind of placate Basil, he also took his own sister, Thecla, out of a monastery and gave her to Basil as, like, his mistress. So Basil's wife was Michael's mistress, and Michael's sister was Basil's mistress. You following me? Okay, this is the days of our Byzantine lives here. So, as Basil was growing in power, he convinced... Well, when Michael first took power, he assassinated Theokistos, the very capable eunuch who was assisting his mother. But then, under Basil's guidance, he assassinated his uncle Bardas as well and got rid of him. So Basil was pretty much the main guy in terms of Byzantine power. But then, Michael did something very silly, which was he started favoring another guy. Basiliskos was his name or something like that. And so Basil got really worried, and one day when Michael was passed out in a drunken stupor, him and a bunch of his buddies went in and murdered him. So then Basil the Macedonian, as co-emperor, succeeded legitimately to the throne. And his son, his, I put in quotations because many people again believe that it was Michael III's son, Leo, took over as emperor after him. So that's the whole story behind this gentleman, Basileos Macedon, who is also my strategos because he's a, he's a great, able military commander. And, and as emperor, he did many great things. 
and Eudokia Inger, who is his wife, but her children are or are reputed to be Michael III's children. So they are both in my court. I am not going to be giving him any type of land or anything like that, because as you can see, he is ambitious, and he's a pretty, pretty strong guy. So I will use him as my Stratagos, but I will never give him any power with which he can usurp my power. But that's some Byzantine history for you, some of the drama of the Byzantine Empire. And where were we left off? Well, we just won this war in Sicily against the Aglubids, and really we should probably go to war against them again because they can't go to war against us for a long time, but we can, and, and we really want to take Sicily back. But you know what? Right now Sicily is just too far away from the power center of my empire. So what I'm trying to do is I'm moving these boats here to get my retinue back to the mainland. And then once that's done, I will disband the boats to, to raise some money. We are currently in war against Duke Randolph, or Ramnolf, the Bewitched, the Duke of Aquitaine, and Poitou, Poitou, but that's just, we're just there in name only. I mean, it's the king of West Francia, the king of Aquitaine, the king of Bavaria, pretty much everyone in all of Western Europe is, is fighting this guy, so we should have no trouble defeating him. Come on, guys. Load up. So I'm thinking what I want to do moving forward is I want to expand my heartland in Anatolia by taking on some of these random little Islamic states. So, oh, by the way, the, the video quality should be a lot better now. I've been working hard on it, so hopefully it is. Why, why aren't you getting on the boats, jackasses? No, I don't want you to spin. Oh, embark. There we go. Okay. So... Let's just bring him all the way home. So, that's what I think I could do. Now, there's two ways you can conquer land from these fellows. You can conquer one province at a time, just because we as the Empire have a de jure claim on them, because they used to belong to us. Which is a slow process, but I'm going to be doing it, and I'll show you why. The other way is to declare Holy War. Now, that's a faster process, because you can basically conquer all their entire territory at once, and take over their whole country. The problem with that is, when you declare a Holy War, all the other nations who have the same religion as them will be able to join the war as well. And I'm not going to be able to fight the Abbasids right now. They are humongous. They are more powerful than we are. So instead, I'm going to go about this the slow but legal way, and I'm going to basically take them one province at a time by claiming my du jour rights over those territories. And let's disband the navy here. Okay, so my retinue is growing. Things are going okay. We have some decent money. We have the Varangian Guard now to help us out. So there's a couple things I want to quickly do before we do this, though. I want to try again and see if my lovely wife, the German princess Ermintrude of West Francia, will decide to join me in Holy Orthodoxy. She will not. So I can imprison her. I can award her a honorary title of Court Jester. But instead, I will give her 20 gold to do with as she sees fit. This will improve her opinion of me by a little bit, which should then allow me... Yes, she will now say yes to my conversion. And she will become Orthodox, the one true faith. And I might as well take this moment to say that I myself, that is the player behind Marcus Aurelius, am not Orthodox. I have no dog in this fight. I have been to Istanbul, I've been to Turkey, I found the Turks to be wonderful people, and I like the Byzantine Empire purely from a his for historical reasons. You know, I think they're really cool, I enjoy reading the history, but as far as modern day politics go, I don't care, okay? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not playing the Byzantine Empire because I have some sympathies for Greek people, or I mean, I'm sure they're wonderful, I like everybody the same, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm playing this as a historian because I like the history. As far as what's going on today, that is not within the scope of, of what I believe in or anything that I'm going to be doing as part of these LPs. Okie dokily. So when I say crazy things like, orthodoxy is the one true faith, that's me in character. Okay? That's not me in real life. Okay? Cool. 
Dear husband, peace be with you. I submit to your wise counsel and will convert to the Orthodox faith. Thank you so much, my dear. Now we can truly love each other and spit out tons more kids. Which, by the way, since we're both extra fertile, should be happening rather quickly. We're already in April of my second year. Okay, Georgia. Do you want to be a vassal? No, you still don't want to be a vassal, huh? Oh, because you're a king. I think someone said kings can't be vassals. But I don't think that's true. I think the Byzantine Empire, since we are an empire, can have kings as vassals. But you are the Duke of Armenia. But you don't want to be a vassal either. Well, I guess you don't like me too much, huh? We have religious differences. No, we don't. Are you not orthodox? Oh, you're a, you're a Miaphysite, whatever the hell that is. You're orthodox, though. You're cool. Why don't you want to be my vassal? Oh, you are a king. And base reluctance. Oh, well, screw you, buddy. Guess I'll have to kill you just like everybody else. I don't mind doing that. Alright. So, of these little guys here, who do I want the most? Well, if we look at things in tactical mode, there's this mountain range here that historically the Byzantines used to great effect to defend themselves. Tarsus would be would be okay. It's a pretty decent land. They've got a city with 24 tax. I'm sure that there's charts and stuff I could look at here that, that break this down, but I'm just kind of looking at it. Adana is past the mountains. Like, Hanadon is okay, but it's undeveloped relatively versus Tarsus. Over here we have Colonea. Oh no, we have smallpox. That's a shame. Colonea, this is, eh, not that much money though. So up here things are a bit poorer. I think Tarsus is a good good territory to have, so. Uh, declare war. Uh, de jure claim on Tarsus. Okay, we are now at war. We can call in allies, but we're not going to. And let us... Let's just go ahead and let me show you the other way to raise your troops. Let's go to military, to go to raise personal levies, raise county levies, and raise vassal levies. Okay, that raises everybody. So then we want to go around and just disband the guys that aren't going to be very helpful in this campaign, the guys that are far away. Like these guys. All of you going away. And these guys probably will take too long to get here, but... That's okay. Let's all meet up here, everybody. And from there, we shall move against these infidels, and we shall conquer Tarsus, which will add much wealth to our magnificent nation. Uh-oh, there's a dissident faction who wants to lower my crown authority. And it's being led by the Duke of Dioclea. Why would you do such a thing? My authority isn't even that high. You are trusting and honest. Okay. <laughs> Perfect guy to bribe. What can I give to you? How would you like 33 gold? Alright, now you like me a little bit. So can I request that you... Stop your... Oh, I can do that in Intrigue, I guess. Known Plots. Oh, no, that's not it. I have a prisoner? Oh, can I get some money from you? Ten gold? Hell yeah. Oh, nope. No gold, huh? That's oh, a lady. Holding a lady is kind of a... Not a very nice thing to do. You know what? Go free. It's cool. I don't mind. Alright. Factions. How do I... Alright, the Dew of Samos is also in this faction. None of these guys really like me. Why not? Why don't you guys like me? Short reign and medium crown authority. That's basically it. Otherwise, they like me. So, once I'm reigning for a while, they will begin to like me more. But in the meantime, I have to buy some of these guys off. So, here you go. 40 gold. How am I doing on gold? Well, I'm... I'm still hanging in there somewhat. He likes me a lot now. Okay. 23. He has a negative 3, so we can, we can buy him off pretty cheaply. Negative 13, negative 13. 
All right, you, we're gonna buy you off. You're the Dew of Dalmatia. So that's over here. And you know what, it's probably a good idea to not upset him by making him mad that we're taking his troops. And both these guys too, yeah. All right, cool. So Dew of Dalmatia, I'm gonna bribe you as well. Have some, have some money. All right, so that should put an end to this plot or at least stunt it for now. Worst case scenario, I have my Varangians, who I have not raised for this battle. I released her, yep. Duke Leon has declared... Okay, so the, my Duke of Trebizond is going to try to conquer Colonea on his own in my behalf. So that's really neat. You know what's weird, though, is if my underlings declare a war on somebody, I can't help them. Like, I can't use my troops to help them. That kind of bothers me. And Georgia really likes me now. They like me. They really like me. At least I think he does. A hundred. Oh, yeah. He likes the hell out of me. Okay. You. We don't need you there anymore. We need you in Armenia. We need we need you in Ar Armenia. There we go. In Armenia. Let's make him like me a lot. Levy's race along. That's just too bad. Okay, oh, we've here's 5,000 guys. I have not been paying attention. All right. No, you're not going to be... I'm not... No, I'm not fighting. What is wrong with you people? Seriously. Stratagos, the Ranjian Guard, you're in charge. Wow, you hate me. Why are you working for me if you hate me so much? Negative 67. Wow, because I'm an infidel and a foreigner. Why are you fighting for me then, you jerk? And there's you. And where's Basileus Macedon? You're my Stratagus. Oh, whatever, the Duke of Paphlagonia. I should make it, give it to people who don't like me very much. Oh, here's another Varangian guard guy. Well, I might as well let you guys die instead of my trusted people. All right. Let's take it. Our first army will be... Oh, yeah, Ermintrude's pregnant again. More prestige from me, more prestige from me. Uh-oh, I have a fever that only conquering Tarsus can cure. Well, if I die, at least there's unit 171. You're still, I bought all you assholes off. You like me. Why are you conspiring against me? Stop it. Okay, well. Oh boy. You're just a count, so I can probably buy you cheaply. 52 gold? Are you kidding me? Screw you, man. How about I just. Can I revoke your title? It will cost you prestige and anger your vassals. No, I don't want to do that. Uh oh, I need to take care of this faction somehow. This is getting a little crazy. I don't think I can give him any more money. I think it's pretty much... No, it will not affect it, his opinion of me. Who boy. Okay, well, it is what it is. I have a lot of troops. Oh, I'm alive once again. Hooray. Uh oh. My patriarch is deciding to be a heretic. No. We have to arrest him, unfortunately. I am not going to allow heresy in my lands. Okay, Bishop, you kind of like me. Oh, now you like me more, which is fantastic. Research cultural tech. Someone was telling me that I should have my this guy collect taxes. The problem is they tend to die when they do that. But I guess I could use the money. So we'll do that for right now. And you're researching military tech. All right, good. And we're kind of running out of time. So let's let's take over this this land here. 85,000. How much do the defenders have? Oh, yeah, let's storm that. We don't have time to screw around. Okay. 
Getting some good war score here. Another 2,000 guys. Let's just go and... We don't need leaders. We can march them with the rest. Alright. Really? You're still a dangerous faction? Aperus, you've joined? What have I done to you? Nothing. Oh, raise levies. Okay, aside from that. Oh, you are expensive, but you are a do. We need to keep you happy. Now, who are you? The do of Achaia? My goodness. Do you not see that I'm winning land and glory for our empire? What's wrong with you people? 38. Oh, you're cheap. I like you. Okay. No. Screw you guys. Okay. Our civil war is a minor one. It's this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy. Well, actually, there's quite a few guys, but I'm not too worried about it. So we are going to put this war on hold for a bit and take care of some business with our people here. And you know, now is probably a good time to raise up the Varangian Guard as well. Good thing we have some money. And they're, what's good about them is they're really cheap compared to other... like 300 gold, 33 gold. See the difference? 3,000 Varangian Guardsmen just aching for a fight. And they're led by Theodorus. Okay, I don't even care about that. So I wish I could... This is not very clear to me who's fighting against me and who isn't here. Like, is are they rebelling against me? Yes, they are. Okay. So you guys are going to go... Really? Thessalonica too? You guys are going to go there. You're going to take care of those guys. We're going to take care of these guys. A book without a title is pushed into my hands by a hooded man clad in midnight blue. Something was said, but was lost in the confusion. The book is still there. I either gain 20 piety or prestige and piety. I get the illumination trait. It wants me to read it. Okay, fine. Prestige is good. Okay, I took on I took out this guy. He is now my prisoner. Let's go take out these jerks. Actually, can I break off a siege party? I don't want to split off special troops. I don't want to split in half. You know, in um in Europe Universalis 4, you can break off just enough troops to maintain a siege. Oh well, whatever. I can always come back. It's not going anywhere. I'm doing well in all of my wars. So I'm not too worried about it. And we have a new son. A new son. Hooray. Who shall our new son be? Now remember, those people who were unsung heroes of the Byzantine Pythium campaign take precedence. So even though these guys might not be the first people who signed up, they take the little precedence. Right now there's only three of them. So it's not going to be a big deal. But I just want everybody to be aware. I'm not cheating or anything. I announced ahead of time that they were going to be leading it. So the first one is going to be... Hmm. Okay. Well, Halorser would be the first one, but he only gave me a female's name, and this is a son. So I hope he doesn't mind, but I'm going to be skipping him for right now. Okay. Welcome, Tip, to the world. Tip is my second son, but my ambition is still to have a daughter. Oh, you're assaulting Constantinople, huh? Yeah, well, guess what? My Varangian guard has something to say about that, suckas. This video is going a little long, but I, I want to see some kind of end to this war. Okay, my Varangians are engaging in battle. This is quite the civil war, but we're going to be able to kill a lot of guys. Except for Nicaea has decided not to join, so I can't take his lands from him. Who are you? 
Oh, for goodness sake. All right. This may not be the smartest move, but I'm going to have to split this army up. I need some tactical flexibility here. There are these little chintzy armies all over the place. So, let's let's do that, I guess. Split in half. Okay. So we have Byzantine army number 1. Can I Can I see you, please? Okay, you just move here to Light Lycia, okay? And you take take these guys out. Oh, really? We can't? Oh, they're on an island. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. You go up here. All right. So, you suck. We need to give someone else. We're going to give Bertil the lead and Dublon. Okay, that's, that's a pretty decent group here. And you are Theodoros. Okay, you're the Barangians. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to be on pause there. Okay, and you are Oh no, you're the you're the main group, okay? And you are nobody. So we should give you the Duke of the Armenia Khan. Sure, why not the bishop? If he can fight, works for me. And the Duke of Thracia. So this is quite the little civil war we've got ourselves into, huh? We lost somewhere, but not our armies. Our armies are very strong. All right, you... No, you can go down here, and then the Varangians will follow. Take out these guys. All right, good. We're in good shape. What's going on around here, by the way? Let them rot. You don't betray me and lead a civil war against me and then like, oh, my dungeon, it's not very comfortable. I don't have cable. I'm sorry, dude, but that is not how we roll here. We capture another one. Okay, you guys are gonna go over here and take Seleucia. You are going to stay here and, and take this place. And you are gonna take these guys out, my dear Varangians. I gotta keep an eye on my financial situation, although we are still the Siege of Lamas. Where is that? Wait, what? Oh, whoops. I need to disband you guys. Oh, no. Disband them, please. Okay. I don't know where Lamas is. We're, we're losing it, apparently. I... So we've had... Well, all I can see here is victories. And we haven't had any real battles with this guy, but we're losing war score. Maybe this is where Lamas is. I, I don't even know. Alright, you know what? Let's end the war. Well, one more at a time, I guess. Okay, these armies are ineffective and they can't even take any lands. So let's go... Oh, these armies have grown, though. Hmm. Well, let's just... There's a lot going on right now. Bulgaria's having some troubles, too. I don't know if it's smarter to put my armies together and crush them militarily or start taking some of their territory back. There's a lot going on right now. We captured another guy. Oh, we're going to make a lot of money on Ransom. Ah, these, I mean, yeah, we have more men, but this makes me nervous. So I'm just going to have these guys hang out here and take this place down. You know what? I'm just going to send these... Lower the taxes for your cities. All the mayors get mad at me. We're gonna we can bribe him, flatter and soothe him as we have high diplomacy. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. We've almost taken this place, huh? 
Probably not a smart move. Oh no, 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 not a smart move at all. That was that was just downright dumb, actually. Oh dear. That may have just lost me the war, actually. Holy stromboli. Alright, well, well this this poor army rebuilds itself. We're gonna go join these guys. Oh boy. Where is all this? Mayor of... where? Okay. Okay. I see what's happening. Once we've taken the main castle of Seleucia, we will... We will then continue upward. Because their, their power is mainly in the west. Let them rot. And we captured the Dew of Achaia. Ha ha, sucker. Yep. Go join your brothers here. Another victory, another victory. Okay, we take taken Slukea. Let's move up here and start crushing their armies. Their power base really is in the west. We're at a 36 war score. This guy is gaining war score just by staying alive. But the war doesn't end until I say it does. Holy crap, there's a lot of messages. I don't I don't have time to read them all. Shift click. Oh whatever. Let's put these two together. And Ermintrude is pregnant again. Good. We're gonna need soldiers. Look at you, trying to take the Aegean Islands. Okay, we're almost... Okay, we've taken here. Let's go here now. I know we haven't completely taken it, because it's not a solid line, but... Right now I need to beat these gentlemen on the field of battle. We need to win a decisive victory or two. If we take out this army and take out this army, they'll probably sue for peace, even if we don't conquer their lands. And we won the war that we didn't participate in. Those are my favorite kind of wars to win. Alright, everybody move together. Do I have my best people leading? Oh. You want to go to war again? Yeah, fine. Army of Du Oanis. Okay, I want to see who's in this army. Oh, I don't even care anymore. He has 11. No, no, no. We're going to put the Varangians in charge. Sorry, my friend, but... This is a big deal. Cool here. I'm starting to think Kale might fancy me. Kale is a vegetable. Oh, shoot. I'm lustful, so I can't say no. Oh no, I'm going to start breeding bastards. I went to Lady Kale. Oh no, and I'm in love with Kale. Kale is a very healthful vegetable with lots of antioxidants, but I should love my wife. Another faction turned orthodox. This army is in ruin. We captured another guy, and we are up to 36% war score. I would have expected it to be more. Really, I would have. But stuff happens, I guess. Okay, we can siege this place without too much trouble. Man, this is going to be a long episode. I'm sorry. It probably won't go up till tomorrow. Of course, depending on when you're watching this, you don't really know what tomorrow means. Okay, we've won this back. There we go. And we lost Bishop Focas, did we? Alright, you don't like me very much, so let's make you like me. There's going to be a lot of open spaces for people to... Uh... Okay, good. I had a daughter, and she was a legitimate daughter, which is fantastic. And it, her name will be Miyuki. Um, when Princess Ermintrude was d talking with courtiers, she discovered this 
fancy country far, far away with interesting names and decided to name one of her daughters after them. She's very um, forthright, Ermintrude. She's, she's open-minded. She's worldly. Man, we could have crushed this guy if only my own people weren't such jerks. Oh, you're bringing reinforcements, huh? Oh, well, they come. They're back. Oh, no, no. Kill them. There we go. Okay, I don't know why this guy somehow got in charge. He's terrible. The city guard can handle it. The people will be mad. I lost 15 gold, but I didn't have to let him rot. Holy moly. Alright, they are crushed, but I'm only at 50% war score. That's crazy. Let's we need to take the land of some of my biggest let's take Arta. That's where one of my one of the dudes who are fighting against me lives. Oh, one of them died in my dungeon. What a terrible shame. Starcon, we're gonna trade you with the Duke of Paphlagonia. He's loyal, which is nice. We're still making money. Although my my vassals are really pissed off. Take it. I don't know what kind of war score I need to to make these guys stop rebelling against me. They just have all these tiny little armies running around. It's quite annoying, actually. How dare you? I am Marcus Aurelius. Oh, my mistress Kale died of pneumonia. Not before giving birth to a bastard son, however. Who is going to be... Dun, 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 dun. Tolstoy. Sorry, Tolstoy. I'm sure you probably didn't want to be a bastard, but... Don't worry, I'll take care of you. It seems my amorous ventures have resulted in a child. Little Tol Tolstoy is my spitting image. Okay, if I legitimize him, Unit 171 is going to hate me. Prince Tip is going to hate me, and Muki. So all my, all my other kids are going to hate me. Kale, who died, is going to be pleased. If I acknowledge him, he can be legitimized later. And if I denounce him, yeah, I'll acknowledge him. It's fine. And you know what? This has gone on too long. So, friends, I'm sorry. I'm going to be calling it to a close. We will finish our civil war in the next episode. I'm sure we're going to win. I mean, we have tons more troops than the guys going against me. It's just it's just taking forever here. In fact, offer peace. They will not enforce demands. Really? Uh, do I have to get a 100% war score against these fools? Anyways, thank you so much for watching and have a good one.